the history of this patient. Was chronic tonsillitis for a couple of years during the time she was growing. I remember as a child having tonsillitis and have difficulty in swallowing. The tonsils are swollen. And I can well understand that a child <coughs> developing a tongue thrust. This, we had a real tongue thrust in this place. Now here she is after treatment. <laughs> what did I do? Uh, well, did I do surgery? Now here was her face. And now here's her face. This is a photograph of it. Now what, what took place? How did I treat it? How many of you noticed that those are the second molars? I took out four first molars. That's a four first molar extraction. These are the wisdom teeth. These are the second molars. These are the wisdom teeth. You didn't even notice it. It was treated so well you couldn't tell the difference. So what we did was to take out the four first molars. <laughs> you didn't think of that, huh? We had to wait a while for the second molars to come in far enough to get, to get them banded. If you notice, she had fillings on all four first molars, and they were very flat. Now, if we can take the original here. Now, you, we're going base on base on, and you can see how much this chin came forward. Like somebody said, it does look like surgery, but now let's look at the prediction of the mandible. And you see his prediction of the mandible is right on. But what happened is she rotated up. And what, what we didn't calculate here was the rotation of the mandible with the extraction of the tooth plus a long siege of myofunctional therapy. She had seven weeks, seven weeks, week after week, of muscle exercises and swallowing exercises, which she cooperated with very much. So I think this is a very interesting case. This shows you some of the opportunities then in some of these open bite retrogathic cases that many people today are doing surgery on. Now as I recall, I did have a headgear for a while against her second uh, premolars so that we could start the retraction of her upper front teeth with the cervical traction. The fact is, if anything, she looks a little flat now, doesn't she? But that's exactly the profile of her father. So maybe that's a normal profile. For her. First molar right away. At the time of the first interview. Yeah. Yeah. First thing I did was take out all four first molars. Uh, number one, they were all flat. I waited for banding the second molar for it to come all the way up. But I started, I, uh, I started with extra oral head here. Excuse me. Extra oral Yeah, against the second bicuspids. Okay? Straight forward. 
Yeah. It's open bike. Open bike. So I wanted to bring him down and back a little bit. Then the mandible was coming this way when I was going that way, so away we went. Then this little girl also, I remember her case so well. I got right in the middle of treatment and she got mononucleosis. Mononucleosis, you had that disease? Uh, it's, it's a rash, a young person's disease. The glands swell. It's also called the kissing disease. <laughs> I thought maybe I would try to walk you through again two things. Number one, the phases, because we haven't talked enough about the different H groups. Years ago, I had a visit to Houston at the University of Texas in Houston. There was a classmate of mine at Indiana University who was at that time head of the department in Pedo and Houston. I had lunch with him and I said, well, what, what are you teaching in orthodontics? Well, we're doing preventive orthodontics. I said, what do you mean you're, if you're doing orthodontics, how are you preventing orthodontics? Well, he didn't know, but he was doing it in the children. So I began to think about the term a little bit. When I was trained in school, we only had two phases. One was interceptive and one was corrective. So there was, there was only two phases of treatment that I knew about. Interceptive meant to mix dentition. Corrective meant the adolescent full dentition. And that was about the limit of our teaching. Now something else had happened. I had started treating in the deciduous dentition. We've already seen cases, and I think in the first year, 15 years, maybe I've treated over a hundred children, even before the mixed dentition. Yeah, You've seen some here on the storyboards. So I went in about 1976. I reorganized my thinking in order to write my books. And I reclassified this whole problem. Preventing orthodontics means... The yoga? Yeah, all right. All right. It means, if possible, preventing the malocclusion from involving the permanent teeth. Now that's the way I interpret the term. The objective of preventing orthodontics, which roughly is from age 3 to age 6, little patients at honest stars level are manageable. And indeed how much pleasure they are. Working with children at that age is absolutely a delight. They're so full of vigor and so cooperative and so trusting that it's a pleasure to work on. Now the objectives of that is therefore orthopedics and the correction of function. So form and function, form and function, form and function. Correct the skeleton if the skeleton has a problem. Correct the teeth if there's no problem with the skeleton, but in both instances, correct function. This means swallowing, breathing, speaking, chewing, and all of the parafunctional problems around the mouth. As I showed you, the permanent teeth follow the deciduous second molar. If the deciduous tooth can be corrected, either class 1, class 2, or class 3, class 1 crossbite, class 2, or class 3, then you've given the patient the opportunity of erupting the first molars in a normal inclusion. You've widened the palate. That in itself changes the relative pull of the muscles because the muscles are attached to the palate. So in the preventive phase, the objective is not a detail of the occlusion, but a moderate over-treatment of the occlusion. We have here uh, something to show you. In the treatment of a case with a crossbite with a little crowding, crossbite. class one. Here it was, a crossbite on one side and a blocked out lower lateral. Now what we did was to expand this with the quad helix above and a bi helix below. Uh, we widened the upper molars 9 millimeters. 
you widen the nasal cavity three millimeters and widen the lower molars deciduous teeth have been over treated so they were in crossbite within six months after that with no retainers it had all fallen into a beautiful class one occlusion it was remarkable the patient never needed a second stage of treatment. So here was one in the mixed dentition. Now let's go to the interceptive phase. Roughly it is age 7 to 11, 7 to 10, depending upon the patient. Roughly it is the interceptive or the mixed dentition. Now it gets a little more complicated than the preventive. Very simply because arch length now is superimposed over the problem. Not always, but quite frequently, uh, the malocclusion is worse. Uh, so uh, as the permanent teeth start wedging themselves in, and uh, the upper central incisors come in and spaced and rotated. Uh, Todd called it the ugly duckling state. Uh, the mother says, I can't understand it. The baby's teeth were just straight as could be and just like little pearls. Now look. So the objectives now in the interceptive phase are the same, structure and function. And as you saw, the objective now is to create an environment where the premolars and the canines and the second molar will erupt into class one. You're intercepting it, correcting the molars, and the second molar is guided in by the position of the first molar. And what you want to do is to give normal inclined plane action a chance to operate in the developmental stage. So all that I talk about now in the mixed dentition is in the interceptive phase. Now the corrective phase is roughly age 11 to 13 or 14. As long as growth is still present, the corrective stage is still operative. When we still have growth to assist us in the correction, then we can make the correction by utilization of still some orthopedics, but much less. Now we have to think more of teeth, and we're more limited. All of the problems that were present before still are there. And in order to do orthopedics, it takes more force because the jaws are bigger. And we can still bend, uh, bend the mandible open a little bit. With extra oral traction, we can still use a little bit of maxillary orthopedics. And even with intermaxillary traction, there's a little bit of uh, alteration of the skeleton. But after age 12, as I showed you, in an open bite, high convexity, open bite, class 2 mouth, I was not able to treat the non-extraction. Now we come to the complete adult. In a female, any patient that is 15 or more has to be treated now as an adult. Any boy roughly age 18 doesn't have enough growth left to be useful. So these people would be called young adults. And that would last until about age 25. Uh, Up till age about 25, that's a young adult, uh, until they're approximately out of college. Now, from 25 up to about 45, uh, these are intermediate adults. Uh, 45 on, they're older adults. Uh, when you get up to be 70, uh, <laughs> what does that make me? <laughs> a senior adult. <laughs> The oldest orthodontic patient I ever started was age 76. I did a complete orthodontic job in a woman that was 76. She started the TMJ case, and I told her what the options were. She says, let's go. Can you start it right now? She was wide open for full orthodontic treatment at age 76. She's still alive, still kicking, and she's 90 now. Comes in this evening. What do you think, Doc? <laughs> Very sharply. Now, in the senior type, in the adult type, we classify six types within this, the, the adult type. The first type is ameliorative. The word ameliorate, it means to improve without full correction. That's what the word means. A simple closing of a diastole, treatment of one arch, uprighting of a molar. The second type in 
and the antithesis of that is full comprehensive. When you do the whole thing, you do the same as if it was a corrective stage. The next type is what I call reclamative. Reclamative. You reclaim, like the Dutch reclaimed the sea. Reclaimed reclaim the land. From the sea. In other words, it would it would be something that would die. They would lose their teeth with periodontal disease, mutilated in cases, reclamated. The next time is reconstructive. This means that you're setting the case up for reconstructive dentistry, setting up for bridge, etc., etc. Now the next type then is surgical. Any type that needs surgery has a whole different regime, a whole different treatment plan, a whole different approach. Okay. So there's all of these different possibilities then in the adult. All right, now tomorrow we will see some patients. So I will be in the clinic with gloves on, mask on, and I'll, you'll see me operate. Okay. Saturday morning then, I want to see if we can talk about the principles of finishing and the principles of retention. So, see you in California.